Auto insurance can all seem the same until it comes time to use it. So don't get stuck paying more for less coverage. Switch to USA Auto Insurance and you could start saving money in no time. Get a quote today. Restrictions apply. USAA. Have you ever wondered what it's like to bite into Nerds gummy clusters? They're fruity. They're tangy. They're gummy. And they're crunchy. Nerds Gummy Clusters, a union of fruity sweet gummy and tangy crunchy nerds. Unleash your senses. Shop now at nerdscandy.com. Our decorating is classic and timeless, as is our advice. So today we're sharing a classic DTT episode from the archives with you. You only get one chance at that first impression. I'm Anita Joyce here with Kelly Wilkness, and this is Decorating Tips and Tricks. And today's episode is Decorate Like a Pro Entry Edition. And boy, we do not want to miss out on decorating that entry. It's very important that we hit it just right because that's where we're going to make our first impression. Absolutely true. And because it's sort of a pass through room, obviously, it's not a real destination room. Sometimes people overlook it or uh, clutter begins to gather or you didn't move out that seasonal item and yet the seasons have moved on. So (laughs) we're going to cover a lot of things today. We're going to give you some ways to make it very functional, but also to add some really super wow decorating punches that will really make your entry Make a wonderful first impression and a lasting impression, not only on your guests, but for yourself as well, right? Because you're the one coming in and going out. And if you come in and out your front door or your even your back door, you're the one that's seeing it every day. So it should be beautiful and special for you and your family. I agree with you. I think this is kind of a place that a lot of people, I wouldn't say don't decorate, but they kind of leave for last. I think that kitchen and the living room, that's where people start. Uh, because that's where they're hanging out. And so it's easy to say, oh, the entry, you can't really put much in there. But this is the place where you're making that first impression. And this is the place where you're setting the tone. So this really is a place where you can put a little effort in. And this is going to be what people remember about your house. Not only can it set the tone for your home, and wouldn't it be lovely to walk into your home and have a place to put your keys or your dog leash or your coat or your flip-flops, whatever it is, and to look around and and have it feel welcoming and beautiful and to give you some peace. I love decorating my entry. (laughs) And I love walking up my steps because I have that big glass window, which at first I thought, oh, no, this is terrible. I'm going to have to figure out a way to cover this round window, but I've grown to love it. I just don't, you know, I don't walk around in a towel on the first floor anyway. So because I would get to know my neighbors or they'd get to know me way too well. I can see into my entry. I can even see into my dining room a little bit. And I love to see my, not only my furniture, but my light fixture and the vignette, seasonal vignette that I may have on the table. And it just sets the tone for me. And it says, Welcome home, Kelly. And that's what we want your entry to do for you and your family. This is another room in your house. Don't ignore it. It deserves attention. And to furnish it in a lot of ways, like any other room in your house, the difference is going to be that this is, like you said, Kelly, a transitional room. This is a room where you're just moving through. So, And it's not going to be large in most cases. So it's really going to be minimal what you can put in there as far as seating or or storage in there but I think definitely try to burnish it like you would any other room and also I think this is a place where if you want to add some punch this is where you can do it you want to add some wow in your house I think this is a great place to do that agreed almost like a powder room usually you're not going to have a gigantic entryway I mean my My dream entryway, and I was thinking, what is the difference between entry and foyer? Is there a difference? Foyer just seems bigger and grander. Well, and Uh, then there's the foyer. That's even bigger. Oh, yay. (laughs) Yes, I think that's what I need. But I I dream of a foyer with a brown pedestal table with an absolutely gigantic vase with a tremendously large 
lush floral arrangement in the, in it and a stack of books and some beautiful things. I'm probably never going to have that because I think I'm going to be the old lady in Pasadena or from Pasadena, whatever that song was. I think I'm going to be in this house for a long time. So I don't think I'm ever going to have a giant entry like that. Mm -hmm. But the point being is when you take the tips from today, so you don't have to have a giant space. You can take the ideas and do it on a smaller scale. If you can't fit a table, well, then maybe you can just fit a tiny little shelf or floating shelf, or like we talked about those shelves created with the corbels, like Anita did in her hallway. There's going to be a smaller version of what we're talking about today. And we are going to give some ideas for actual small solutions for a tiny entry. Talking about punch, I'm thinking what you said, I, I mean, I'm just thinking about what you said about these small little foyers. When you have a small foyer or a small entryway, then whatever you do isn't going to take as much time or be as expensive. For example, if you put in wallpaper, it's a much smaller area than if you did your living room. So this is a place where you can do something really fun, like a beautiful wallpaper. Or let's say you wanted to add really a very strong pop of color, but you're nervous about painting an entire room in some really bold color. Well, what about doing it in your foyer and then... It's not as big an area, and it's just that one area, uh, but it's open to a lot of other rooms, so it, it's not it's not as scary, I think, in my mind. The thing you need to keep in mind if you do that is to be sure that whatever color you put in there, whatever wallpaper you put in there, is not going to clash with anything in the other rooms. So you just want it to work with it. It doesn't have to be... You don't have to repeat that color, but it just has to work with the rooms coming off of that uh, entryway. You can start with the flow that we always talk about in the foyer. As Anita said, you can saturate it. Say you had a pale pink or a blushy kind of color that you have floating through your home in different areas, and you're kind of carrying that as your accent color around. Well, in the entryway, you could really make it super saturated pink. You know, that's super over the top. I have a picture of an amazing entryway that was done in this lipstick pink with these French antiques. Anita, you're going to go crazy for this. So oh, I'll pop that into that podcast as oh, well. My. Right. Because you just have to see this one to believe it. Um, so we're talking about the pops. I also have some essentials that I want to talk about in an entry. But since Anita kicked us off with the pops, that is such a fun place to go. So let's let's think about that. What could you do in there? A daring color, like Anita mentioned. Um, a wallpaper. Maybe that's a great place for this removable adhesive type wallpaper because, again, it's not a big space. It, you could do it yourself. Shouldn't be that hard. How about a really dramatic chandelier? Not just one little bulb in some little flush mount. Not a boob light or any cousin of a boob light. Have something, <laughs> if you have some height, have something dangle down. Have mm -hmm. something that at least has four different bulbs in it. And definitely you could go over the top with a mirror whatever your mm -hmm. style is something really interesting yeah so while you're talking about over the top i was also imagining perhaps an oversized mirror or an oversized piece of artwork this is a great place again to add some wow so maybe an eight by ten might be interesting but if you had some piece of artwork that's maybe four feet tall then that is, you're not going to miss that. And especially if it's full of color, I think this is a great place to add some beautiful, large-scale artwork, if it will fit. Also, how about some bold fabric? Sure, you don't have a lot of room for fabric in an entry. So where can you add some fabric? Well, if you've got a bench, is nice to have in an entryway for someone to sit down and put their shoes on, why not? Even if it's just a wooden bench, maybe you have a cushion made for it. You do a really cool, bold fabric. And if you have a bench or something like that, you put a cushion and then maybe put some toss pillows, something like that. If you only have room for a tiny little poof to sit on or something like that, maybe you get in a really bright color or it's like a saturated velvet or something like that. And how about a statement rug? I think a statement rug could be fabulous in an entry. It makes sense to have a rug there as long as it's not um you know something that you could slip on so maybe something that has either takes a rug pad or has the bottom on it and if you can something that can be either washed like a ruggable or something that could be hosed off because maybe people are going to come in 
with their shoes on. I hope they don't, but if oh. they do, you'll be ready. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, I have a few specific items that I found as well. Oh, because- good. Because I'm thinking, like you, we need a console table in there. If it will fit, it's so nice to have something there to put a lamp on. You can set your purse on it, your keys on. And like you said, if you don't have room for this, then you can go with a shelf on the wall. But I love the idea if you have room for a console table. I found one that's the Aleka uh, on the Jocelyn Main site. And it is 63 inches wide, but it's not very deep. And this one is a beautiful brass. It's a very simple, thin legs. It just, but it's a very elegant, simple design of these brass or gold legs and a glass top. And this would just be so beautiful. And it also has some stretcher bars at the bottom. It would be so beautiful in an entryway. And I see, like you, like you talked about, a very bold wallpaper behind it. You'll be able to see right through it or a very bold color on the wall. That sounds so pretty. And I'm thinking even that console table that I got from Target. Remember that one I talked about? Really simple again. You you, you jogged my memory about it because you were saying those simple uh, metal lines, but mine is mirrored on the top. But the beauty of that one, it's only eight inches wide. And I needed that behind my sofa because I didn't have a lot of room for the sofa to be pulled out, but I wanted something behind it. So if you were really slim entryway, eight inches. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You know, just some place to set something down, and then you would get the mirrored effect as well. Oh, I love that idea. And that's the nice thing about a very simple console is that you really don't focus on the console, but you can focus on the wall behind it if you have something really beautiful with some beautiful woodwork or a beautiful color on the wall. Uh, another thing that we talked about that I think is beautiful in your foyer, and that is a mirror. I think we all like the idea of a mirror most foyers do have a mirror in them and I do love the idea of an oversized mirror or just like you said Kelly one that just has a pop a very unique look to it I don't want to see a mirror that everyone has I'm looking for something very different and fun so I found one that is round and I love round mirrors for some reason I have no idea why but this one has little wood balls and it's all painted gray but little balls all the way around the circular mirror so it almost looks like pom-poms all the way around and it's very unique and very pretty and I think it just adds just a very interesting feeling to the room oh wow I've never seen a mirror like that but I do love round too and you know I think the thing about adding a round mirror is that in decor in our homes We have a lot of 90 degree angles or square or rectangularly shaped things. Think about it. Mm -hmm. Maybe you have a round coffee table, but mostly rugs are usually squares or rectangles. You know, occasionally you'll see a round rug, but a round mirror is easy to add in and it's a sort of organic shape. So I think an entryway would be a great place to add in a round mirror that one from Walmart, if they still have it, I'll put that in the show notes. It is so reasonably spiced because, you know, round mirrors were really hot for a while, and I think they mm-hmm. still are. So you could find them for five, $600, or you could find this one, I think it was like $79 the last oh, time I purchased great it. Yeah. Price. And I, yeah, I have a couple of them. I actually have one in my closet, and I have one out in the barn. So I think I have two or three of those. Really <laughs> great price. Yeah, but I'm going to move them around. I'm going to find a new home. I'm going to unite them and maybe use them somewhere else. So I'm kind of mm-hmm. looking forward to that. But in an entryway, a round mirror would be terrific. Hey, we'll be right back with the rest of the show. But keep listening so we can continue bringing you DTT. We all want to feel healthy and energetic, but most of us are truly running on fumes. There's just too much to do in our busy lives, and exercising and eating right just becomes another thing to do, and sometimes we don't get that done. Add Field of Greens to your daily routine, and you're going to hit all your nutrition goals. Field of Greens is whole organic fruits and vegetables. No extracts, no lab-made stuff. Just one scoop a day gives you simple, real nutrition. That's why I have added it to my daily routine. Field of Greens feeds your body with fruits and vegetables medically chosen to support your heart, vital organs, and immune system. You're going to feel steady energy throughout the day, no afternoon crashes, get better sleep, and your stomach's going to feel really good too. 
I'm so sure you're going to love Field of Greens, but if you don't, you can return it for a full refund. And I've got you a deal. We got you 15% off your first order and free shipping. Visit fieldofgreens.com and use promo code DTT. That's promo code DTT at fieldofgreens.com. Fieldofgreens.com, promo code DTT. Have you been listening to the On Set With podcast? I have, and I love it. On Set With is the podcast from HGTV and Max, and it takes you behind the scenes of the most iconic sets from the shows that have changed TV history. Go behind the scenes, literally, on your favorite shows that you know and love, such as Gilded Age, Succession, Game of Thrones, True Detective Season 1, Sopranos, Insecure Girls, Friends, White Lotus, Righteous Gemstones, and Hacks. And like in our own home, the decor sets the mood, tone, and vibe. You're going to get insights and tips from the pros in the TV industry that you can use in your own spaces and lots of fun information about the shows that you enjoy. And whether it's a mansion, a castle, a resort, or a coffee shop, these places all have something in common, the creative minds who designed each set. You're going to hear from production designers, set decorators, and visual collaborators who brought these famous locations to life. So listen to On Set With on Max or wherever you get your podcasts. So the next item I have is a runner, a rug that's a runner, and this one is really beautiful. It is wool, and it's blue, and it's and white. It's a flat woven rug, and it's got a geometric pattern to it. So I think this one's really beautiful. It's the Gillespie Geometric, and I'm going to be adding, of course, a link to that so you can see it. But of course, that one comes in many different sizes, and you would choose the one that, that works for your house. The great thing about a runner is that it's usually so much less expensive than the full-sized rugs. So you can get away with a runner, which makes sense in an entryway, because oftentimes they're long rather Mm -hmm. than being squared off. So go for the runner. Save some money and get the pop. Absolutely. And what a great way to add color to your room is to, to use a runner. You don't have to add it there. But it's an easy place to add it, especially if you've gone neutral on the walls. I like adding a rug with some color. Can I jump in here for one second to Mm -hmm. ripped off that? Yeah. A lot of times people's entries abut their staircase Mm -hmm. to the second floor, right? So you walk in, you may be a little entry and staircase is either right in front of you. I had that in my last house or it's a little off to the side. So I'll hearken back to something we discussed a couple of episodes ago. If you're staircase has carpeting on and it doesn't look so great maybe you want to take that off and either paint your stairs or think about a different kind of runner because that will really be part of your entry if you can see it right so you Mm -hmm. want to continue the look going up the stairs then and maybe the easiest way to do that is just to take that off if it's kind of seen better days and go with a good paint job what a great idea And again, the stairs, it's not as big as a whole big room. So just converting the stairs is probably not as expensive as putting in a wood floor in an entire living room. And sometimes you just need the carpet ripped up and a lot of times there's wood underneath. So that would be fun. If you have carpet to see what's under there, might be a little scary though. But I do agree (laughs) that that can mess up the look of that beautiful foyer if there's some not so nice carpet on the stairs. I like to have an umbrella stand in the foyer. I found one that is a blue and white chinoiserie, shall I say it? Oh, well said. (laughs) Well, I guess I'm calling it chinoiserie. It's blue and white, but it's actually florals. But it's a, you know, ceramic umbrella stand. And that uh, is really pretty. I think that would be very nice to have. I actually have an antique French floral vase, like a florist would have. Yeah, those are great. That's what I have my umbrellas in, but those are a little hard to find. So this this would be a beautiful option. And I have one other specific item, one last one to include, and that's the Edlin Bench. This is a raspberry velvet with brass feet, and Ooh. it's they're calling it a modern Italian shape. So it's kind of a modern style. It's, it's not really traditional. So it has those straight kind of gold or brass legs on it. I, I really love that silhouette, though, 
and velvet is just something I am crazy about. So this, if you had room for it, I think would be a beautiful place to have a nice little bench. This one doesn't have a back to it. So again, if you're if you're short on room, then sometimes these are a little then a, a kind of a long ottoman is a better thing to do, or a bench rather than a chair with a back. Sometimes you can get away with something. Sometimes these aren't are a little more narrow, but I think this would be a great place if you have a place for it to sit and then take your shoes off, uh, set your purse down. It is nice to have some seating in your entryway if you have room. Oh well, I can't wait to see that because that really ticks all the boxes of what we're saying about doing something in entry. It's functional. You've got a place to sit. It's totally wow with that color. It's pretty sim- slim line, so it should fit. And it's just like a wow moment. I love it. I'm definitely going to check that out. Let me go back to the uh, umbrella stand. I love the idea of having things in your entry that serve a purpose, but are also beautiful. So that item clearly does that. The thing that you don't want to do is if you have to have hooks or things like that, but you don't have a closet, I'm closet challenged, so I don't have a closet in my entry. And so if things have to be out, that's okay. If your kids have backpacks and that's where they go, that's okay. Or you want to hang your jean jacket or something like that, or your scarf or whatever. But don't let things linger there out of the season. You can make a, a hook look like almost a display, even though it's your sort of everyday coming and going things. But if you're walking in in July and there's a woolly scarf hanging there, that's just a big bummer, right? And what does that say? It's like, well, we don't care. or We didn't notice that was there, you know, just take it away. Mm -hmm. When you're not using the items, don't let them gather there. Don't let 12 pairs of shoes just land in your entryway. Mm -hmm. If you're not wearing them, put them someplace else. Get a basket with a lid. Make sure they go in there. I am constantly picking up Converse sneakers and putting them into the little cabinet that we have in the entryway. I was able to fit in a tall but very slim cabinet that I got at that restoration hardware where epic warehouse sale that I went to nice. before we moved in. And it was the wrong color, but I just had the painters painted the color of the entryway. So you see it, but it doesn't pop out at you because mm-hmm. it's the same color as the wall. And it's got a bunch of shelves, probably got like six or eight shelves. And it's a perfect place for people to put their shoes, kind of where the um, reusable grocery bags go before they get back into the car. So it's some place to hide things away, but things that need to be in the entryway. So even if you have a tiny little entryway, there's probably some really good looking storage option that you can include there so you can squirrel away this stuff. I love that idea. And the exception to the rule, I think, with hiding the shoes is if you have some really cute hunter boots, I leave, I, I leave mine, mine out are by in the my point. entryway. Yeah, I leave them out, out there. I think they're really cute, so I leave them by the umbrella stand. But yeah, if they were my farm boots, I don't leave those those muddy things. I don't leave them by the front door. Let's just run through what we think the essentials are. So I'll say what I think the entryway essentials are, and then if Anita wants to add stuff, she can add. So I think a, some sort of horizontal surface. If you can get a table in or a console, if it's got a drawer, fantastic because you can put the keys in there. You can put the dog leashes, stuff that you might need for coming and going right in there. A mirror for sure. A lamp. If you can get a lamp in on that table or console, that is wonderful because what a cozy way to come home or leave a little nightlight on for yourself and you know, rather than having overhead all the time. But if you can't fit that, maybe a sconce. Maybe somehow you can work a sconce on either side of the mirror. Even if it's the um, ones that are not hardwired, you can have them plug into an outlet below. That could definitely add some nice ambiance. But if you're doing an overhead light, then make it big enough. Make it really uh, illuminate the area and, and make it interesting. Uh, a little place to sit, whether it's just a little perch you could even do some sort of like, um, you know, we're talking about creating a shelf with portables for a console where you could create a little perch too, just make it lower. You know, I mean, if, just really try to think the best use of all, every square inch in your entryway. A rug, I think is essential. I think that covers it for me as far as true essentials for the entryway. Do you want to add anything, Anita? 
I think you did a great job of covering all of that. And I was just thinking about how I have no room in my front entryway. But we usually come and go out the back door. And I don't have an entry, obviously, on the back of the house. But I've put a little... I think of those folding trays, like a, a TV tray. I kind mm-hmm. of have something like that, only it's nicer looking because it's, you know, it's mahogany and everything. But I have that by the back door, and that has been such a nice catch-all to put my purse on, to set a bag down if I'm carrying a grocery bag or something. So I think there's a lot of things you can do if you don't have room for something big you can usually go with something small or if you don't even have an entryway you can still put something by that front door some hooks on the wall or something uh, to make it usable even if you don't actually have an entryway right and stepping outside just for a second the whole experience of your home starts outside so this is not a curb appeal episode so i won't go too deep into that but if you've got something right by your front door, something pretty, some flowering plants, uh, a little, maybe an interesting catch-all for your mail and get a basket or something like that, or even just simply a nice mat. You know, that is all giving signals to what's to come in your home. And particularly if you're very small entry, that might be a place where you can add an item. Maybe you put a small table outside your door. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I could definitely see, especially living in a place where we don't get a ton of different kinds of weather, putting maybe a grocery bag down on something right outside my door, opening the door and then coming in. There are ways to make it work on either side of the front door. I think that's a great idea. I love that. And kind of think of that as an extension of the foyer, uh, as an entry to the foyer. Yeah, an entry to the entry, the pre-entry. Mm-hmm. Right, a pre-entry, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> it's that time of year again. I'm going to be pulling out my cable knit cashmere pillow covers from Quince, and I want you to be doing the same. What beautiful pillow covers and such luscious cashmere. You're going to love them as much as I do. They come in gray and also a creamy white and an only forty nine ninety. Incredible price. Quince is incredible in so many ways. Their quality is top-notch, and their prices are so reasonable. They're able to give us these reasonable prices because they partner directly with top factories. They cut out the cost of the middleman and pass the savings on to us. And they only work with factories that use safe, ethical, and responsible manufacturing practices, along with these premium fabrics and finishes that I'm always telling you about. Go to quince.com slash DTT to get free shipping and 365-day returns on your next order. That's quince, Q-U-I-N-C-E dot com slash DTT for free shipping and 365-day returns. Quince.com slash DTT ebay motors is here for the ride with over 122 million parts you can make sure your number one ride or die stays running smoothly brake kits led headlights bumpers whatever your baby needs ebay motors has it and with ebay guaranteed fit it's guaranteed to fit your ride the first time every time plus at these prices you're burning rubber not cash keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com eligible items only exclusions apply Are you ready for the DTT definition? I love it. So I think we decided to call this DTT Defines. And uh, I'm loving this. So you guys let us know if you like this. And if you have any decor words that you're not sure about, shoot us an email and we'll put them on the list. Okay. So the term for today is shirust, as in shirust wood. Mm -hmm. C-E-R-U-S-E-D. So shirusing, I found out I was I wasn't I had not known this before, but it's it's actually something that they started doing to deter wood boring insects. So they would kind of press in this caustic paste of slacked lime, and they would rub it into the open grain of the wood. And that started in the 16th century in Europe. Wow. So, so what do they say? Necessity is the mother of invention. Well, well, and it was not for decorative purposes originally. Apparently, it was to keep these insects out of the wood. So they thought that this right, would be... but they invented this new finish because they needed to get the bugs. Right, right. Well, then it became the look and the and what this is. And now we actually use tinted wax, <laughs> but 
But right, so this what but what they would do is push this uh, lime into the wood, so you would have the dark wood and the white lime, and so the sharusing ha- talks about or it, it refers to the dark of the wood with the white wax kind of pushed in in the grain. So that's mm-hmm. what it's referring to. Nowadays, the sharusing is done with liming wax, which is a white tinted wax. Now you can use any color wax for sharusing but the traditional color is the white wax and the interesting thing to think about when you're doing this or i should say the important thing to keep in mind is that if you have a piece of wood that has a lacquer finish on it or a polyurethane coat something like that that's that's going to be impervious to water then you're not going to be able to shrew it. you need to be able to access and get inside the grain so you want really more unfinished wood or maybe stained wood but wood that hasn't been treated beyond just a stain so interesting i considered for a short moment a shrewsed floor when we were oh in the house. wow that but would I be didn't awesome go that way i'm gl- i'm glad i didn't i think it would have been not right for this house but i could think of applications for that for sure. maybe maybe a smaller piece so if you are going to shiru something it really works well with a very open grain like oak or mahogany so that's something else to keep in mind but it can be done and our friend amy howard that we had on has liming wax and i'm sure she has plenty of videos that will show you how to use it yeah i i think of when you see a piece of shiroost furniture you can almost like feel the grain. It doesn't, right? the wood doesn't feel smooth. If it's super smooth, probably not going to take it. It's not going to make any difference. It's got to be able to get into those grooves, right? Exactly, exactly. And you know what I'm talking about. Some of these, some of the vintage wood that you pick up, it's got polyurethane on it. You're, you can't cherouse that wood. Right. Wow. Great term. We are all going to be so smart. Gosh. <laughs> It's I've fun. Learned a I lot. love these. Yes, I love it too. And I also love our crushes, and we know you do too. So, my crush today is okay, sort of two things it's a concept and a podcast. So, I listened to a podcast that I listen to a lot, and they interviewed a woman, Dr. Lori Santos. She's a professor. She's not a medical doctor, but she's a professor at Yale, and she teaches a class there on happiness. And then, as people do, Anita, She began a podcast Mm -hmm. called The Happiness Lab. The whole point of Dr. Lori's work is the science of happiness. Now, I'm, I think, a very happy person, and I have very good reason to be happy, and I'm grateful and all of that. But there's something to be learned about how you can be happier, what makes you happy. I like learning the science behind things. And what really struck me about her, and here's where the concept comes in, is one of the things that makes people very happy is having the affluence of time. <laughs> so it, don't you love that, Anita? So Ooh, it, That's you very make, interesting. You're very interesting, right? So you are wealthy in time. Now, that doesn't mean you're laying around binge watching, but I guess if you had to do that once in a while, you could. But that you make time not only for yourself, but also to be with, not necessarily serving, as a lot of us do, the people we love, right? (laughs) Whether it's be our kids or our family members or whatnot, but actually spending time with them, what they might call quality time. That term just really stuck with me, the affluence of time. Is she saying the more time you have, the happier you are? The more free time, the happier you are? That you have time that you make for yourself, or you learn to say no to things that are not really supporting you or what you want to do or where you're going, or it will just be a strain on you. So where she feels that she has affluence of time is she makes time to do her yoga and then she makes time to call her best friend rather than having that all pushed to the end of the day. And then there's just never time for it. She Mm -hmm. carves out specific time for it and she kind of stops the madness when she needs to, so she can protect her affluence of time. Yes, I think that's a great idea. Right. And it's not just spending your time wisely, like, oh, I'm going to get all through my to-do list. It's specifically feeling like you've made time for yourself and to Mm -hmm. spend time with the people that you love. So I think you'd really be interested to listen to her speak. She's a very smart lady. So I'll put the links to all those things that I mentioned about her in the show notes. What's your crush? It's kind of functional. It's an office chair. Mm-hmm. I was looking for something very functional to have because now we have, we're have we working from home a lot. So we have a nice leather chair, but you know, those leather ones 
aren't always as functional as you need them to be, if you know what I mean. You know, like, because we have an old leather one that I love to sit in, but it's not adjustable. It doesn't have movable Ergonomic. Armrest. Right. So we needed something mm-hmm. more like that. So for that sort of thing, I thought this was pretty nice looking. I wouldn't say it's pretty, but for that sort of thing, I think this was one of the best looking chairs I found. It's actually white and blue. And a lot of them are black. And honestly, mm. some of these chairs look like wheelchairs. They do. Peter could really use ergonomically designed mm-hmm. chair because he's at his desk for so many hours. But I have him on a this velvet chair because it's, those oh. uh, chairs are so <laughs> ugly. He doesn't mind. He'll probably be all hunched over and it, it, I'll be very sad <laughs> that that happens. But I always tell him, sit up straight. Sit up straight. Maybe if I got him a better chair, he could sit up straight. So maybe well, this that's chair, but I don't do blue, so I can't even have your No, chair. but they have other colors. But that was, oh, okay. but the white even. I thought the white looked so much better than the black. They're just, the black ones, I just think, I just can't even look at them anymore. Yeah. Uh, some of them are so unattractive. Uh, but yeah, I mean, if you're using this as a, a you know, 15 hour a day chair that you're having to sit in, it needs to be ergonomic. So yes, I'd rather have a velvet chair or a leather chair or something. But anyway, this one has some breathable mesh and whatever. So anyway, I'll include the link. I thought for a functional chair, it was not bad looking. Good. Yes. Because that category, like the tissue boxes and the other things yeah, we discussed, really somebody could do a better job. If we had more time, we could do all this. But alas, <laughs> we, we've got to work on our podcast and be with our listeners. So we don't have time to do that. So it was so much fun hanging out today. I uh, would love to pop into all of your entries. And remember, we are here to inspire you to create a beautiful home. Until next time, want to talk to us? Well, we really want to talk to you. So let's schedule a design consult. And Nita and I are here to give you individualized, actionable advice on how to create the beautiful home you want and deserve. It's so easy to schedule a design consult with us. Simply click the link in the show notes or head to decoratingtipsandtricks.com slash consult. When we talk to you on the scheduled time, we will be ready with so many great tips, advice, and yes, tricks. So sign up today for a design consult. We can't wait to talk to you.